Hi, I'm Steve Morgan, founder of Cybersecurity Ventures and editor-in-chief at Cybercrime Magazine. I'm here today with Al Graziano, co-founder and CEO at Cyber Ranges, developers of the next-gen military-grade Cyber Ranges platform and technology. To learn more about Cyber Ranges, visit cyberranges.com. Al, welcome. Great to have you with us today. Hi, Steve, and a pleasure for, uh, for me to be here. So, Al, we're here today to shine a light on Cyber Ranges. The company is doing some very cutting-edge work in the industry. Before we do that, tell us about your background uh, in the industry leading up to uh, Cyber Ranges and SilentSec. Yes. So, uh, my first uh, experience in the uh, cybersecurity industry was academia. So, I started working as a, as a lecturer in a university in the UK just after my, uh, my PhD. And, uh, and then over the years, I developed more and more of a passion in security until in 2005 or six or around that time, uh, I uh, started the first MSc, one of the first MSc in the country in, uh, in security. And uh, then at the same time, started working also in uh, uh, delivering more and more training or consultancy. And I started a company in, uh, in, in Sheffield in the UK. And then over the years, we, uh, we became larger and larger and focused more on uh, system integration, consultancy, uh, and as of today, even uh, mild security. So Al, you co-founded Cyber Ranges in 2017. What was your vision for the company and its platform when you launched? Uh, so our vision was primarily to develop something that would streamline and make our job when delivering training much more uh, efficient and uh, cost effective. Uh, remember that around uh, you know, uh, 2015, uh, around that time, we were doing a lot of training, security training, and uh, we were doing all the traditional things like you know, setting up virtual machine or virtual box, uh, exchanging files with students, and uh, that in itself was cumbersome and required a lot of logistics and planning when you were delivering a training course. And the other problem was that if you wanted to update the content and share the updated content with the students, it was very difficult after the event, after the training. But you know, effectively, we wanted to have a uh, hands-on training platform that would support our, uh, our business at the time. So one thing I find really interesting now is, you know, the cybersecurity industry uh, as a market has been around for a very long time. Cyber ranges have been around for a long time, yet we haven't had many, still don't have many commercialized product offerings. Uh, so I am wondering, you know, in that limited market uh, with, with the small number of companies who are playing there now, what is unique uh, or, or different about uh, what cyber ranges is doing? Uh, well, um if you look at the market in the last two years, uh, there has been quite a large number of, let's say, uh, offerings or products that uh, verge on or circle around the area of you know, cyber range. Uh, and um, that in itself you know, can create a lot of confusion to uh, you know, the buyers or you know, consumers of cyber ranges. But I would say that the uniqueness of our platform is that uh, we don't focus only on uh, skills development. Uh, we also focus on the, the application of skills. Uh, the way I normally describe this is, is like this. Um, when you are developing a skill, such as, for example, learning to drive a car. Okay, so you, you know, we all done that. You learn to drive a car in a car park or in a, uh, in a closed environment where there are no threats. Okay. Uh, and that's how we learn how to, you know, to uh, use the, the gear stick or the automatic or whatever. Then it comes the case of applying those skills in a real world environment where you, know, you have to go from, you know, from A to B and you have to drive. And there are a number of threats, you know, pedestrians and uh, cars and you know, traffic lights and all the rest. So we do both. We try to uh, help people develop the skills, but also create a simulation environment for them to uh, to apply those skills in an authentic, in authentic environment. So Cyber Ranges is available in four ways from your company, if I have that right. Uh, and it's very unique and compelling the way you uh, offer it uh, as a service, uh, as a hosted solution, as an on-premise solution. And what we found really interesting was a portable solution. So maybe you could tell us about those. Okay, so... 
Um, when we started developing uh, cyber ranges as a, as a technology, we had two, two options, really. So one was to use the, uh, so we wanted to use cloud technology, that was uh, important for us, uh, for the scalability, for the uh, orchestration, i.e. the ability to automatically start, stop, and manage the workflow of the virtual machine, so that we don't have to do it manually. So that was our choice, uh, and we literally had a choice whether to uh, lean upon uh, something like Google or Azure or to develop our own technology. Um, we chose the latter, which was uh, more complicated. Uh, it required a lot of effort, but in the end, it allowed us to have different options, which was first, we offer it using a, our own cloud infrastructure, and therefore, uh, similar to what uh, you would experience on AWS or Azure. Um, we can then offer it as a hosted, where effectively it's the equivalent of web hosting. So you have your own range, your own private range, and there you can have your custom simulation environment where you can simulate uh, threats that are specific to your industry or to your, uh, to your vertical. Um, and then because of the full stack technology that we've developed, we were then able to offer it as on-premise, uh, which is very important for um, a number of organizations where uh, data uh, confidentiality and you know, preservation of data is very, very important. And, uh, and finally, we, we were also able to condense it in, uh, in a portable, in a, in a set of three laptops. And the, the use cases here is really for those organizations that want to deliver a simulation-based training or uh, uh, advanced uh, simulations away from the office. It could be uh, in uh, an area where there is limited internet uh, connectivity, or it could be as part of you know, team building, or most of these cyber exercises sometimes are not done within the confines of the organization. People travel and go to different locations, and then they are able to bring this along with them. Now, is there anybody else with a portable solution, uh, and is there a lot of demand uh, for that? Uh, there are other organizations we've seen offer, let's say, a portable cyber range or a mobile cyber range, whether it is really portable or just mobile is two different things. You know, mobile, you know, you can uh, put some wheels on a very, you know, small uh, um, uh, Unit, but you can't really travel and bring that unit with you in as a checking baggage on the plane. Right. Uh, what uh, we focus on was making it exactly portable, so that you can actually go on a plane and take it with you and deliver, you know, the the, the event or the training that you were focused on. And with your customer base, Al, is there more demand for one of those four solutions or? you know, do you have those four because they're really asking for everything depending upon who you're working with? Uh, there is a prevalence and the prevalence is, uh, you know, the, the on-premise mm -hmm. uh, or the hosted. Uh, that's the prevalence. And that's because the organization that uh, today are looking at cyber range technology are uh, either large organization or government organization or media organization and uh, there, the, the residency of the data is very important. So the on-premise plus the ability to uh, be hosting your own data scenario, uh, data about the, the trainee or the users of the platform is very important. Um, but the you know all four are you know, are good, but for different for different use cases. Now you touched on you know the market developing over the past three years, and you know there are companies who are emerging. But from our vantage point, and we track this very carefully, we speak to CISOs, I'd say that there might be a couple of dozen companies with substance who are on the radar screen. Uh, you know, this is still starting to bubble up. Why has this market taken so long, even with the new entrants over the past few years? You know, why is it that we're just seeing cyber range technology now? Um, I, have a, I have a theory or, you know, uh I uh, I tried to uh, I came up with the, the you know the uh, technology curve you know when you have a new technology that appears on the market and you have the the technology curve that shows the early adopters you know the late adopters and all the rest and uh, my theory and my understanding of the market is uh, it's simple I guess uh, 
the reason why cyber ranges uh, as a domain has become much more popular in the last uh, two, three years is based on two things. And, uh, you know, whenever you're talking about new technology coming into a market, there are always a number of technology triggers that really um, are catalytic to the, uh, the widespread of the technology. And uh, the two um, uh, uh, catalytic factors with regard to cyber ranges are cloud technology and agent-based uh, attack simulation. So cloud technology is very important because it allows you to, first of all, scale. And uh, you know, it used to be that, for example, if you look at the large-scale NATO cyber exercises, uh, you know, up to 5,000 virtual machines, it would take quite a, you know, an infrastructure, quite a, a workforce to set that up, to plan it, and all so on and so forth. But if you now start looking at how cloud technology and orchestration comes in, the ability to start, manage, even a large number of virtual machines becomes much uh, simpler and much less cumbersome. So cloud technology is number one. Second is attack simulation. So if you look at all the cyber ranges that were uh, in existence up to three, four years ago, uh, they were 99% coming from the military domain. And, you know, you're talking about uh, large deployments of, you know, hardware with a lot of, you know, uh, virtual, you know traditional virtualization, uh, which you would have to manually set up. And then what you would do, you would have, you know, the, the hardware simulation you know, uh, layer, then you would add uh, attack simulation and you would have uh, appliance based type of vendors that you could hook into the range and then pump traffic, pump attacks, and that's really what we do with our cyber range, and we call our cyber range a next generation cyber range. A next generation cyber range is really something that at the core it has orchestration. So orchestration is automation of not only the simulation environment, but also of everything else. So the attacks, the, um, the users, you know, you can create virtual machines attack based on how many users are you know, coming into your environment and so on and so forth. Uh, and uh, these are the two technology triggers that have really made a difference. So, and, and it's not uh, surprising that the majority of the vendors in the so-called range uh, domain are cloud-based cyber ranges because they simply use uh, public cloud providers to have that level of orchestration. However, what it's missing is the orchestration of everything else apart from the virtual environment. You see, traditionally, up until two, three years ago, uh, a cyber range was defined as a simulation environment, pure and simple. Today, if you look at a cyber range, it's not just a simulation environment, it's a platform. It's a platform that includes a simulation environment, includes attack simulation, includes, you know, internet simulation, includes, you know, user simulation, user management, includes competence frameworks, you know, like NIST NICE, includes all these things. And at the center, you have the orchestration automation of all of this. And that's why we've seen a lot of it, uh, you know, uh, widespread today. So we have a lot of uh, CISOs who are watching us out globally, uh, and especially in large enterprises, uh, Fortune 500, Global 2000 companies. What's involved for a security organization who hasn't done this before, or you know maybe has dabbled but hasn't really deployed their own cyber range to, to actually get this up and running where they're starting to train their personnel? Okay, so it depends on what you're trying to achieve. Um, as a CISO, you have two concerns when it comes to the competence of your staff. So one is hiring and upskilling the people that you hire. And second is to uh, train and continuous professional development of the professionals that are in your team. Okay, so you have these two components. Now, uh, if you want to, if you want to, get set up and running uh, for the first user group, you know, skills development, uh, any uh, cloud-based uh, range will, go, will do. It's a simple you know, user registration, even on ours, and then in uh, 
in a few minutes you can be up and running and have access to you know, hundreds of labs where a student can click and can learn how to configure Splunk, how to you know, configure firewall and things like that. But when it comes to um, applying those skills and therefore you, know, you have a, a soft team or you have a team of security professionals and you want to keep them up to date with the current threat and threat level and understand if they have the right skill set or the right competence or they have the right team dynamics and you know, the soft uh, skills to be able to respond to certain security incidents or cyber threats, you need to be able to simulate these threats and apply them in the workplace fairly quickly. I would suggest to the CISO to combine these two elements, the skills development and the application of skills and the testing of these skills in a realistic environment. The problem is that if you look at the market, you either get one or the other for uh, the uh, in, in, the, in across the various cyber ranges that are available out there. Right. And for your customers, what does it look like uh, when they are working with cyber ranges insofar as the time it takes to get up and running to actually have your platform available to their staff? So the time is very quick when it comes to skills development or uh, attack simulation. So uh, we have a library of uh, content for skills development, and we have a library of content for attack simulation. Where So that's fairly quick. Uh, you come on board, you register, you plan a session, and that goes on fairly, uh, fairly quickly. Uh, where it, uh, it is more uh, bespoke and custom is where you are an organization and you, know, you want to create a replica of your environment, which is you know, as close as possible to your environment. So everyone is interested in you know, having real commercial systems okay, in, uh, in a range. But if you uh, uh, look at all the possible combination that you can have by having you know, a SIM, an EDR, and then, you know, uh, an antivirus, you know, all the possible security solution out there, you can end up with endless combination. So if you want to have a replica for an organization, you really have to spend time doing a little bit of system integration to create something that is similar to what the organization does. Uh, as an example, we delivered a cyber exercise for a large insurance company last week, and what they requested was that their environment had you know, Curator, uh, Carbon Black, you know, Symantec, and uh, of course, you know, we can support and integrate all of those. The, the customization is what makes it unique for the client, and once you have a hosted environment, then you can reuse that uh, on demand every time you want. So, Al, we have a lot of uh, CISOs who come on with us directly for interviews. They're on our podcast. Uh, one thing we hear over and over again, it's one of the hottest topics. It was before COVID uh, and throughout COVID, you know, we're still hearing it. There's a labor shortage. It's very challenging. Uh, you know, CISOs are trying to uh, not only recruit, but retain their staff. There's a lot of turnover. We're looking at about three and a half million unfilled cybersecurity jobs globally this year, 2021. Can you connect the dots between that problem and having a cyber range and how that might help? Uh, having a cyber range definitely helps and there is a connection. Uh, I feel, however, that is very important for, and you know, I, from a consultant background, I always feel very strong about managing expectations because you know someone comes to us as a CISO for example and they want to solve this problem and uh, cyber range as a domain or as a technology or a series of product has the same problems that any other product has you know it's a new trend it's a new uh, new product or technology and the there is a uh, uh, a tendency to look at the new trend or the new technology as the solution the, to, to, the, to the problem. Uh, if we don't do that, but we look at what we can really get from a cyber range, then we get a lot of value. And uh, the, the value in uh, reducing the, short, the, the skills shortage is that you can commoditize, you can accelerate the, the experiential learning. So before, if I wanted to teach someone how to configure a firewall, I would have to send them to a training course on site. Um, 
Today, I can enroll them on a program where people can learn in their own time. Maybe there is also um, a, a remote assisted delivery of the training, but it's still based on the cyber range. So cyber range technology has definitely increased the ability for people to learn in their own time and a more experiential level. So that's very important and it's definitely doing a lot for the skills shortage. Um, what I find is uh, uh, still uh, there is a gap between the range and the traditional training is that currently many cyber range uh, product technology are aligned to uh, what we call in the industry the competence frameworks. So NIST NICE is one of them. And if you look at the competency frameworks that are used in the cyber range domain are completely different from the competence frameworks that are used by all the training vendors that have been very popular and very strong until today. So I'll give you an example. If you want to uh, become a uh, computer forensic analyst or a penetration tester or you know any of these professions, there is a body of training companies that have been very successful and they are very good at what they do who have developed training courses mapped to a very granular set of competencies. But if you look at, for example, uh, NIST NICE or all the competence frameworks that they are developing here in Europe, they are less granular than what we have for the traditional training. And I see that unless the cyber range can support the, the traditional competence frameworks that have been very good and very successful, uh, we are not reaping the benefit. It's like, you know, we are, we are throwing away the old just because it's old, but there is a lot of good that we can still implement in, the, in today's cyber ranges. So Al, where do you see the cyber range market uh, going over the next uh, two, three, five years out? Um, any innovations that, you know, CISOs and security teams should expect to come out of uh, your company and others perhaps? Uh, I have uh, a clear vision uh, in my, my opinion of what is going to be the market. So I see right now, first of all, there is a, a huge increase in the uh, skills development, you know, subscription model business where, you know, you have a company, a CISO, uh, and they want to hire or they want to train their staff and they just subscribe them to, you know, hands-on experiential learning on an online cyber range platform. This is going to continue for quite some time, but my expectation and my vision is that there is going to be somewhat a bit of a uh, disappointment unless there is a change, unless CISOR understand this change. Because what we are doing right now with cyber ranges, you know, with the subscription model is where you are basically re replacing traditional training where you have, you know, loads of providers, loads of certification, with subscription-based training, which is much more hands-on, but at the same time is, you know, we are replacing, do you know this with, can you do this type of model? What is still missing is, can you drive from A to B? You know, we are training and developing uh, the skills of security professionals to teach them how to drive a car, okay, how to use a security tool. What we are still not doing, which is what the CISO really wants, is we are not testing if those skills applied in a realistic environment and situation can actually work. Can they deliver a job? So, and until we do that, we are not going to see the improvements that we all, you know, as CISO and uh, uh, we want to have. So my, my vision and my understanding of the market is that after this phase of subscription, we are going to see uh, a lot of simulation-based uh, training, but not of the type that we see today, where you know you have to set it up, uh, book a session, and deliver it. Right. I want to a level whereby I can take any of my uh, my team members. And I can put them through, you know, skill development and simulation, fairly simple, simply, without any, uh, you know, complexity or, you know, and 
if I can do that, then I can really address the skill gap problem because I'm going to have you know, a continuous improvement loop where people come, they learn the skills, they, they develop the skills, and then they test those skills, and then they keep on doing that because you know, the security industry will always evolve. So our cyber ranges is very well positioned in what uh, we believe is going to be a huge growth market. Um, you know, I think we're at the end of the runway right now, and it's an exciting opportunity for a lot of companies, including uh, partners who aren't cyber range companies, but you know they're looking for platforms. What does your partner program look like? Uh, what types of companies partner with you to bring this to market? Uh, so we focus on, uh, uh, you know, we obviously follow, follow a channel uh, model and we work with partners. Uh, the type of partners that we work with are companies that want to, that they, they understand the, the problem of the industry. And uh, therefore, they're not companies that just want to, let's say, resell a subscription, but they are companies that want to be more engaged in the, in the simulation business, in the in the real application of cyber ranges. Uh, and that's why, for example, one of the, the strong uh, suits of our, uh, of our technology, we have a very powerful um, composer application, which allows you to create a simulation environment, to create the, the attack simulation, and to then you know, automatically orchestrate once it's running. So we are always looking for partners that can add uh, to that uh, they can either be you know, technology partners they, where they want to integrate their technology into a range or they are uh, you know, uh, system integrators where they have this background experience in setting up system, uh, setting up simulation environment because every organization is different. So, you know, I can have an environment with Splunk, but 10 different companies who all use Splunk they will, have, they will have a completely different corporate environment because one will have Splunk with you know, a different EDR, one will have a different uh, antivirus, one will have different even uh, uh, data loss prevention systems. And, and again, uh, as an example, uh, what we did uh, last week, um, the, the attack simulation that we have in the library, they have to be changed when a certain client has stronger security controls because otherwise, they don't get picked up. And now you can, you know, you can do it uh, uh, and use a standard library, but it won't be very meaningful for an organization. Our cyber ranges or any simulation environment in general to be effective, you need to provide, you need to be able to provide this custom integration because otherwise it's going to be uh, completely sort of irrelevant or you know, mostly irrelevant. Well, Al, we really uh, appreciate you coming on with us today. The company has an exciting platform and message. Uh, you've got a highly technical background. You're a visionary, but you're also a really good marketer, I have to say, even though we didn't talk about that, uh, because you've got that cyberranges.com domain name, which is invaluable, and I think a lot of people are going to find you that way, too. Was that you? Did you register that domain? Correct. Uh, but at the same time, is. Uh it's something that I registered, you know, quite a few years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't think at the time that it was going to be so valuable today. Uh, but, you know, when we chose that domain and we started working on cyber range technology, because it obviously evolved from a training platform to something, uh, I would say, in a completely different beast, I would say, today. Uh, so today we, uh, we are very grateful that I made that choice uh, at the time. Yeah, cyberranges.com. Al, thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you very much for having me, and uh, I hope the, the, the Cyber Range domain will, uh, will give us, you know, all of us, you know, vendors and users a lot of satisfactions in, uh, in, the, in the time to come. I'm Steve Morgan, founder of Cybersecurity Ventures and editor-in-chief at Cybercrime Magazine. Joining us today was Al Graziano, co-founder and CEO at Cyber Ranges developers of next-gen military-grade Cyber Ranges platform and technology. To learn more about Cyber Ranges, visit cyberranges.com. You can keep up with all of our media at cybercrimemagazine.com.